Securing the uh, round of 16 spots over there with that win over uh, Senegal. Uh, Senegal securing the round of 16 plays with that win over Cameroon. Meanwhile, yesterday, Ghana drew with Egypt two goals uh, on 2 2, but head coach Chris Eaton refused to blame individuals following that Black Stars draw on Thursday evening. Uh, the four time African Cup of Nations champions were held to a 2 2 draw, uh, were denied all three points in a poor Satan draw against the North African side. Mohamed Kudu scored a brace in the first ever Afghan appearance, but they were not enough. As Omar Mamouj and Mustafa Mohamed, he capitalized on errors from the Ghanaian players to tie the game. However, Hutton decided to move away from those errors, claiming they are a part of the game. Um, as, uh, as a coach of a group of players, you... you feel frustrated because in a, in a performance that um, that I think we deserved to win um, mistakes in the game are part of the game and you you hope you make less mistakes than the other some sometimes teams can make a lot of mistakes and uh, the the opposition don't capitalize on them unfortunately two mistakes we made today the opposition was able to capitalize on them but we have to accept this. It's part of the game. You have to try to limit the amount of uh, errors or mistakes that you, you make. And, of course, the team that limits it the most is a team that has a better chance of, of winning. Um, but I think probably at this moment I'm, um, I'm more thinking about the performance. You know, it's, it's, it's a dressing room in there that's it's, uh, an, an upset dressing room. And I don't think it's because of individual mistakes. I think it's because we played so well, I think, particularly f um, going on from our first game. Uh, and it was a really good opportunity for us to get three points. So that's uh, Chris Eaton. Well, uh, my colleague Muftar Nabila is an Abidjan. He watched that game, interacted with some of the players, and also has been interacting with some of the fans in Abidjan. Fifi Manfred is also my colleague with uh, sister station in Sheriff and Bays in Kumasi, and he's also been analyzing the game, uh, take it, you know, observing the key lessons that uh, Ghana could take out of that game ahead of the tie against Mozambique on Monday. Uh, let me start with Muftar Nabila. Muftar, um, what can you report in terms of the mood in camp following that draw, and even among the supporters back here in Ghana, people were relatively impressed with the performance, but in camp, what have you picked up? Uh, Muftar, if you can unmute yourself, we, we are unable to hear you. Uh, I apologize for that. I said that um, in camp, the feeling was quite ambivalent mm. um, because many of these players actually felt that this was a game for the faking. Uh, we all heard from Mohamed Kudus when he said that Forward players who want to score their goals and they will make impact in, in, in the match. But unfortunately, in the end, they were able to pick just a point. Uh, interacting with some of the players at a mixed zone, one who clearly felt that um, they feel disappointed, they feel that this was a game they could have won, but unfortunately, it, it ended in a draw. But the satisfaction, too, is a point that um, they were able to pick a point. They, they improved, considering the fact that the performance against Cap Verde was considered to be below par. And if you are able to improve in your next game, what it means is that um, some of the things you are doing in the training grounds are actually being picked up by the players. I interacted with DJ Ramani, George Barton, Chris Shooting in the I spoke to Abdul Salih Summit, Daniela Mate, Richie Lofori, Dennis Odoi, Alexander Jiku, and it was clear that that game against Mozambique is more of a grand finale. In fact, just a couple of hours ago, I watched the Cup Verde versus uh, Mozambique game at the stadium. And uh, though um, many of the players of Mozambique, when they were passing by, maybe for the purposes of language barrier, they were not willing to speak to us. But one could clearly tell that their body language did not speak like a, a team that actually believes that uh, the last game is actually there for the taking. But, um, but uh, <laughs> football is funny. When I was interacting with some members of the 10 car team and told them that uh, Cavede has won the game by three goals to zero, one of the 10 car team members told me that 
a, a one goal alone can change the entire fortunes of a team. No one would have thought that Cape Verde was going to give Egypt a very good run for their money and even get a point in that game, but they did it. But today, they capitulated and uh, Cape Verde took advantage of it and won by three goals to zero. The grand, the, that match which is going to happen on Monday is more of a, a final. It is a final before a final. A final because it is a game that could define the future of either of these teams in, their, in, the, in this year's African Cup of Nations. So it is important that they all come into that game hoping that they'll be able to pick maximum points. From a Ghanaian perspective, I have seen the players, I, I, I have seen their reaction, I have spoken to coaches, and I've seen their reaction. I heard voices from the dressing room. Chris Hilton described those voices as voices of reaction, which is quite normal, because he said in the dressing room, in his own words, they were fighting in the dressing room. This clearly tells you that they feel there are a lot more they, they have to do, and uh, if they want to deliver uh, and meet the expectations of Ghanaians, they will have to be at their best against Mozambique on Monday. I mean, uh, 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 Mufta, you were saying that based on what you picked up, it, uh, in camp, in the dressing room, following that Egypt game, the players were confronting themselves yes. for the mistakes. And, it, yes. and it, you know, there will be some credence to that. Even when you listen to Kudu's comment, he described it as silly mistakes. And someone will say, yeah. well, isn't that too harsh? But to think that the players were actually confronting themselves for the mistakes that were committed... Uh, in the game, it's quite interesting. But let me bring Fifi in now. Fifi, in, in, in fact, uh, yeah. uh, just before you bring in Fifi, even the technical team confronted themselves. So it is, it is, it is, it is it's something because they had this agreement on the technical. So when they went into the dress, they had to confront themselves. Like, hey, we should do this. We didn't do this. We should we throw it down. We didn't do that. So I, I just feel that this is a group that is hungry for success. Mm. And they believe everyone's idea is important to achieving that success. So mm. everyone is out there seeking to fight in the interest of Ghana. Yeah, interesting. Uh, uh, Muftar, just hang in there for me. Let me bring Fifi now. Fifi, I'm sure you monitored the game between Cape Verde and Mozambique. Um, Kevin, at the moment, of course, I'm not sure if they anticipated topping Group B in, you know, knowing Egypt and Ghana were there. But at the moment, they are top. They've advanced to the next stage of the competition. Uh, talk to me through the chances that Ghana have now. How can Ghana qualify to the next stage? What do we need to do to qualify to the next stage? Uh, Kevin is top. Uh, Egypt will have to play Kevin in their final game. Ghana will have to play Mozambique. Um, just take me through the dynamics involved here. <laughs> How can Ghana qualify to the next stage of the competition? Well, thank you very much, Musbao. First off, um, like Muftar was saying, if they are fighting among themselves and they want to win, then they just have to win a bit against Mozambique. That's the first thing. I mean, you go into the Mozambican game, and if the thought is that, as Musbao is reporting from camp, that it's a final, then you go into the final to win. Um, Chris Hutton alludes to the fact that it was a good performance. We are not interested in performances again in the Mozambique game. In fact, performances will not be enough in Mozambique, against Mozambique. Yeah. It's just going to be a game where you have to get results. Mm -hmm. So if in that game we don't perform well, but we get results, it's going to be a good one for us to go to. And if you look at the table, Cape Verde is with six points, Egypt two points, Ghana one, Mozambique one. If we win, we are on four points. There's a likelihood that even if Egypt does beat um, Cape Verde and they go on to five points and six points, it is very likely <clears throat> that with a win, our goal difference is going to go to um, zero. And even if it's just one goal win, because you have minus one now, it's going to go to zero. And we are going to be part of the best um, uh, uh, third place qualifying teams, most likely. So we just have to win. Even aside the, per the permutation, the rules are clear. Head to head, if it's just the two teams that you're comparing, if it's just three teams, um, you look at points first before you go to head to head, then the goal difference and the other things come. Those are there, but we need to win. And in going against the Mozambican team, it's about playing a little bit more like we did against the Egyptians in the first half. Mm -hmm. But then we need to be extra careful. We need not to worry. You can tell clearly that um, Inaki Williams and then uh, and then um, Osman Bukhari finding themselves in those zones are not comfortable zones for them. And they were G2. They were put under some pressure from the Egyptians, from Omar Mamouche and Trezeguet in those areas. And then they were G2. The boys need to calm down. They need to understand that 
in as much as in recent times, results have been hard to come by, and there's a lot of pressure from home, and rightly so. It's a game of football that we all have here. But they need to calm down. They are top professionals, and they can get a job. I'm excited to hear that Mufta was saying that they were actually um, confronting each other. They need to. You remember that Jose Mourinho um, um, documentary, Atoria Mosfer, where Son confronted Hugo Lloris. It has to happen. I mean, even at our regular workplaces, we disagree with each other. At the end of the day, the job has to be done. So we just want to know that um, with the, in our next game against Mozambique, regardless, the job gets done. Mufta, what? Yeah, Mufta, yeah, yeah. Mufta, just, just, just a quick one to what um, um, if you was saying. In fact, Chris Hilton described the game as his best game since taking over the taking over the Black Stars coaching job last year, and uh, so uh, it is a game that actually gives him a certain level of satisfaction. But let me just add that some of these confrontations would only happen inside. And we are privileged to often get some of these things. But when they come to us, they will tell us that they will not blame anyone. We win as a team and we lose as a team. George Boston was clear with it. Uh, Abdul uh, Salis, uh, Mohamed Salis, who was clear with it. When I, when I asked him, in fact, it was a categorical question about how individual mistakes uh, have denied Ghana six points in this competition. It was a categorical question, I said that um, they win as a team, they lose as a team, blaming individuals could affect them psychologically. Mm. And it is important that everyone um, just get over the shoulders of mm. these players who made mistakes mm. and bring them in and let them understand that uh, you made a mistake does not mean that your quality has been diminished. It has not. Mm. It mm. actually shows that the next game, you should be psychologically ready mm. to go yeah. and redeem yourself. That's why, in fact, some of the decisions of Chris shooting, I found them questionable because I actually feel that that mistake that Inaki Williams made, I'm sure he would be more hungry to redeem himself. Osman Bukhari would have been more hungry to redeem himself after making a mistake. But as we heard from Chris Hutton, he's very close to the players. He described Osman Bukhari as an honest player and that um, he feels psychologically he was no longer in there. Mm. Some of the crosses that he delivered, he feels that those crosses were an Osman's crosses because mm. if he was right in his frame of mind, mm. he would have been able to do better with those. But that's why he decided to pull him out. Mufta, but this yeah. suggests to us that these boys are... Mm. Mufta, just finally, if you can hear me though, just finally from you, um, how the, what's the itinerary of the Black Stars now, between now to Monday? What, what, what have you picked up? So what I've picked up is that they will, they will train to, uh, tomorrow. And um, on Sunday, they will do a press conference, a pre-match press conference. After the pre-match press conference, then um, they will go for their last training session before the game against Madagascar. Okay. One thing that we've also, or we're also hoping would be done is a possibility of an open session with the media which could happen before the game uh, against Madagascar. If it doesn't happen before the game against Madagascar, then there's a possibility that if Ghana qualifies to the next stage, uh, the Ghanaian journalists might have an opportunity of interacting with the players, just like Nigeria did when uh, Ghanaian journalists went to their hotel, mm -hmm. interviewed any player of their choice and, mm -hmm. and, and all that. Yeah, well, I'm sure you meant uh, the, the last game against Mozambique. You can mention Madagascar there, Mozambique. Well, uh, Fifi, let me just get your final thoughts, though. Um, final thoughts. Thank you, you Thank you. Yeah. Fifi, your, your final comment. Well, well, um, well um, I, I think that it is good. I like the performance from yesterday. Um, we just have to keep it together and then hope that we get a job done. Um, I saw, I, I know that a lot of people say that when we are going to play against teams that are not good, we tend to even make them look better. So people are a little bit jittery with the Mozambican game. But then of the face of the performance I saw yesterday against Egypt in the first in the first half, I think that the Mozambican game is going to be a good one. I, I'm pretty confident that we'll get a job done against Mozambique. We will not repeat what happened the last time after the half gone. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Fifi, thank you very much. Muftao, thank you very much. And uh, do take care of yourselves very well. And of course, Fifi will join us on Joe 99.7 FM on Sunday between 4 to 6 p.m as we look ahead to the game, even more detailed, uh, you know, on the, uh, ahead of the game on Monday there. So you can join us on Sports Arena on Joy FM, 4 to 6 p.m. on Sunday. That's all we have for you on Prime Sports tonight. Of course, the show is produced by Kwame Benaya. 
and uh, the entire team. Do have a lovely evening.